This program is brought to you by First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you? When running a business means... Where did I put that receipt? We can help you with instant accounting, free software that does your bookkeeping for you. <laughs> when running a business means... Wait, why do you mean the container hasn't arrived? We help protect your business from risk with Mohwebi Insurance. And when it means... How do we pay our staff that don't have bank accounts? We help you make multiple payments directly to people's phones with e-wallet bulk send. At FNB, we're constantly innovating to help business owners at every stage of their journey. Good evening and a warm welcome to First Issues. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. In a grave worried tone, the World Bank stated in its Global Economic Prospects released in January that the outlook for the global economy has darkened. The statement was merited by the World Bank's projections that global economic growth will decline from 3% in 2018 to 2.9% 2 in 2019, all the way down to 2.8% in the year 2020-2021. As if those warning signs were not flashing bright enough, economists at the International Monetary Fund have said we are now in a significantly weakened global expansion. After the organization recently downgraded its forecast for global economic growth for a fourth time in just nine months. The slowdown has now triggered a weakened global economic governance. Some prominent examples of this are the US-China trade tensions, credit tightening in China, economic turmoil in Argentina and Turkey, weakness in Germany's auto sector, and the United States of America's sugar-high fiscal incentives to grow their domestic economy. As a global economic participant, what do all these things mean for the cradle of mankind? It is a common anecdote that when the big economies sneeze, Africa catches a cold. To put this into context, here's an example. China is now Africa's single largest trading partner, importing 86% of the continent's oil, gas and minerals. The impact of China's slowdown on Africa was evidenced in 2015 when Chinese growth began to taper off. That is not all. Economic downturns are also known to worsen inequality. Richer households often withstand losses of income by drawing down savings or through bank borrowing. But poor families often lack savings or cannot access financial services easily, thus widening the welfare gap between the two groups. These outlooks may seem unduly pessimistic, but what opportunities exist for Africa to emerge victorious during these troubling and uncertain times? Global leader network capabilities at Grand Thornton International, Francesca Lagerberg, speaks to first issues at the outset about what the global economic slowdown is and what the implications are to Africa's own economies and how Africa can transform her own economic outlook amidst the chaos. There's a whole number of reasons why the global economy is moving and I think some of that is very much based around a volatility that's happening. So you've got some of the largest economies perhaps having a little bit of a crisis of confidence about where the world is going. So we've had enormous globalization over the last few years and we're beginning to see a little bit more of a, an internal focus. Some of that is driven by big economies meeting economic difficulties. But the trade war between the US and China is having a ripple effect around the world. And it's creating a, 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 a belief that maybe uh, the economic confidence that was so prevalent a few years ago is falling away a little bit. We, we do a survey at Grant Thornton called the International Business Review Survey. And you're beginning to see a fall off of business optimism. It's a small fall, but it's definitely a change. And I think a lot of that is driven by political instability. Mm, um, quite interesting that you bring up the political instability because it was also shown that there's a lot of um, global economic governance um, weakening. Why is that? What does that mean? I mean, we're hearing all of this jargon and there's not much explanation on it. A lot of that political turbulence is, seems to be being driven by extreme moves towards either the right or the left 
in some countries, but also a very strong sense that there are people being badly left behind. Mm -hmm. So you've got individuals who have been done quite well over the last few years, and individuals who feel that they really haven't benefited from that economic progress. And that's showing through in the political environment, where you've got politicians who are really trying to speak to a broader group within a country, and that is driving a lot of volatility as well, mm -hmm. with people demanding more, wanting more, and actually really challenging about whether politicians with all of their previous years of history mm -hmm. are really delivering for them. So you are seeing some riots, you're seeing some political instability in some countries, but a lot of change. Mm -hmm. Different parties coming in who've previously not been in power for many years, and some really strong very diverse leaders mm. taking roles in different countries that again is creating some instability. We're seeing all of that in the news with the rioting and all of that and with the trade wars between China and um, the United States, but what does it mean for Africa, bringing it closer to our home? I think for Africa there's still this enormous sense that it, it is where the real growth will come over the next few years outside of Asia, because mm -hmm. I think we all know that Asia's got amazing opportunity, but Africa has too. And it's one of those incredible emerging economies. So a lot of people are wondering, how can I make sure that I am part of the growth that will come from Africa? Mm. And you're seeing that investment coming in from China and from other parts of the world. They don't want to be left behind. Yeah. They don't want to see that growth <laughs> yeah. and not be part of it. Yeah. But I think also for Africa, that's a, that there is that uh, looking around at those countries that have traditionally been quite politically stable and had strong economies. And as the Africa is emerging in many different countries, they're looking at that volatility and wondering how it will impact on them. Yeah. So I think it's all about change. I think it's about people being able to deal with that ambiguity, mm -hmm. that change, that, that absence of clear parameters, which perhaps were were clearer a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But for Africa, amazing opportunities, huge natural uh, wealth, um, incredible range of workforce, young workforce. Mm -hmm. And you still, you still must look at Africa as one of the emerging e economies. economies of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, as one of the emerging economies of the world, we're seeing a lot of um, regional and bilateral relations within yeah. Africa. But, um, the, the, the recent one being the Africa's free trade deal that just happened in May. Um, w how then do those um, affect the others that have been existing between Africa and the rest of the world? I, it's fascinating to see these trade deals that are forming at the moment because you've got like-minded countries with commonality of purpose joining together and helping themselves to get to a, a better economic state. Mm -hmm. But there's always been links around the world between different regions and different countries. There's a real opportunity here for like-minded countries to work together mm -hmm. to make sure that they're reaching the potential that they can reach. And there's a huge learning exchange there between the different countries. So those that have managed to succeed or look as though they're going to succeed, learning from each other and sharing that information. But I think the, the reality is that people know that they're stronger together. Mm. If you can get that collaboration right between countries, you're always going to be more successful. And as businesses become more international and start to look across borders, they want to be able to do business, not just in their own country, but in like-minded countries. So it, it's hugely important that that collaboration takes place. There's a lot of instability in the Middle African region. How is that going to be affecting the whole setup, if at all? There's always going to be some countries that are less stable than others. And I think you look right around the globe and you can see instability in every part, every region. Mm. And I think for Africa, there's such a great number of lessons they can learn from regions that have done well and regions that haven't done well, and learning those lessons and taking them on board. But it's, there's, they're always going to be stronger together if you can collaborate around trade issues, around real work winning, around bringing, bringing value and wealth to each individual country. So hopefully people stay strong around these trade agreements and really try and make them work.
When running a business means... Where did I put that receipt? We can help you with instant accounting, free software that does your bookkeeping for you. <laughs> when running a business means... Wait, why do you mean the container hasn't arrived? We help protect your business from risk with Mohwebi Insurance. And when it means... How do we pay our staff that don't have bank accounts? We help you make multiple payments directly to people's phones with e-wallet bulk send. At FNB, we're constantly innovating to help business owners at every stage of their journey. Welcome back to First Issues. Before the break, global leader network capabilities at Grant Thornton International, Francesca Lagerberg, said that the global economic slowdown might just be what Africa needs to become a very successful emerging economy. We continue our conversation with her, minding the fourth industrial revolution as one of the key trends to prepare for. There's a really wonderful opportunity for any part of the world that actually is in that emerging state because if you're in a part of the world that's incredibly mature, it's actually quite hard to change. Mm. But there's an opportunity for Africa to leapfrog. And the fourth industrial revolution may be the opportunity to use technology or to use the knowledge that's already in play and leapfrog forward. And I think that's how emerging economies become the future leaders of the world because you have an ability to go, we've seen what everybody's done, we've seen what hasn't worked, we've seen what is working. Yeah. But there is, in the, in the new industrial world, there is this chance not to have to go through every single stage, yeah. just as some of the more mature econ economies have done, yeah. and to take some of those bigger leaps. And be that by just innovation of thinking, or be that around innovation of technology, it, you don't have to spend 20, 30 years getting to somewhere where, which, where you might be able to do that in a much shorter period of time. Yeah, um, so talking about innovation, um, um, in this uh, time that we're in, manufacturing is thought to be very critical. Um, so how does that factor in into the fourth industrial revolution and innovation? I, one of the real values of uh, any of these new changes is that you don't lose sight of what's been very good mm. already. So do you have to forego all the things that worked successfully in the past? to get to the future. And the reality is you're going to have some things that will always be successful. Manufacturing is a huge example of that. And then some emergent areas, which are the ones that are a little bit more at the frontier, a little bit more risky, and some of them won't work, and some of them will. But if you can run your traditional businesses alongside those emergent ones, you safeguard what you have, but you're still able to take those leaps of faith into the future. So I think it's that combination of the two. In a really disruptive environment, which is what we're living in at the moment, managing the traditional and the emergent is going to be the key to success. Okay, um, let us go back to the issue of inclusion. How then do we make sure that everybody is included, developing a culture whereby businesses, governments, people are included in all of this? The, the whole inclusion program is, is hugely important because if you've got a, an economy where there's a large proportion of people who feel left behind, mm -hmm. uh, disenfranchised, not part of that future, it creates not only the terrible situations for those individuals themselves, but for the whole economy. And there's an opportunity here to really embrace inclusion in all its guises, mm -hmm. be that inclusion of gender, uh, around religion, around race, anything that requires that diversity of thinking. In, in an innovative environment, you need people thinking differently. Mm -hmm. You need that ability to marry uh, what you know already with different ways of thinking. Lots of research out there shows that businesses that are diverse in the way that they encourage people to bring new thinking, challenge themselves, be comfortable about really going, are we still doing the right things? Yeah are much more successful and that makes total sense mm. because it's really easy to, to have group think, to operate just as you've always operated and then the world can leave you behind. So mm. there's a great commercial rationale for it, apart from just the fact that why wouldn't you want to help everybody, mm. whatever their uh, situation is, to have the chance to reach their full potential.
When running a business means... Where did I put that receipt? We can help you with instant accounting, free software that does your bookkeeping for you. <laughs> when running a business means... Wait, why do you mean the container hasn't arrived? We help protect your business from risk with Mohwebi Insurance. And when it means... How do we pay our staff that don't have bank accounts? We help you make multiple payments directly to people's phones with e-wallet bulk send. At FNB, we're constantly innovating to help business owners at every stage of their journey. Welcome to First Issues. Global University Spirit Student Survey suggests that the number of youth starting their own businesses has fallen to 37.5%. This is in spite of youth entrepreneurship being a vital pillar in most economies, especially those emerging. Youth entrepreneurship creates employment opportunities for youth, which helps to bring ostracized youth back into the economic mainstream and address some of the socio-psychological problems and delinquency that arise from joblessness. The young people have been regarded as particularly responsive to new economic opportunities and trends, and so they would be able to better adapt to the changing market. Nonetheless, even in having the tenacity to keep up with new trends and the potential to significantly lower the unemployment rate, which is ironically highest in their age bracket, the ability youth have to roll with the blows presented by entrepreneurship have been said to be less than unimpressive. This is because it has been said that youth businesses have collapsed because they lack the commitment, patience and basic entrepreneurial education to properly run their enterprises. This is where Kwewaya Monana comes into play, an initiative by First National Bank Botswana Rail Park branch staff in collaboration with Career Coaching Botswana to develop Botswana youth in business through segmented workshops. The workshops were done for a selected mix of both First National Bank of Botswana banked and non-banked youth aged between 18 to 35 years, having been approved through a vigorous approved application process. The industries represented at the workshops included events in catering, fashion, travel and tours, manufacturing and brand strategy. We found out from First National Bank Rail Park branch manager Jennifer Jameson that some participants managed to score big deals in the process and gained access to more business opportunities. The participants have really gotten a lot from this initiative, I would say a lot more than they had expected to in the short time that um, they have been with us. So one of the things that comes out is the fact that they got more opportunities of networking. Um, we've been told that networking is the only thing that can help you go places. We have a WhatsApp group where whenever they see any opportunity, they would throw it in there, regardless of which um, area it is in, so everyone can be able to participate in it. Let me also highlight that the issue of confidence. Mm. Um, some people, when we started, were saying that they don't even have confidence to stand in front of the public to pitch their business ideas. Mm -hmm. So from these sessions, they, were, they managed to get that opportunity mm -hmm. to learn how to position yourself, how to dress, so that when you, you, you make a pitch, you make one which has the, po the most positive impact. Mm -hmm. um, we have one whom I can talk about. Mm -hmm. After the mentorship session with Mr. Um, Muni, um, he man they managed to talk and right now he's one of the suppliers um, into Mr. Muni's business. Also at the graduation ceremony was youth development practitioner at career coaching Lillian Muremi, who said the partnership between them and First National Bank Botswana Rail Park branch was necessitated by their drive to empower and encourage Botswana youth in business. Basically, at Career Coaching, which is a social enterprise run by young people, uh, we are constantly looking out for partnerships because we are very passionate about uh, helping young people to unleash their potential because indeed, as young people, we are the future of this country. And so we need to ensure that young people 
are also being very much empowered. And so we are constantly looking for partnerships because, uh, you know, there's an African proverb that says, if you want to go far, go alone. But if you want to go further, go together. So we are constantly looking for partnerships uh, to do this sort of empowerment issues. And so we knocked on to F&B Rail Park store to say, hey, we have this initiative, you know, how can we come together, together with your staff to make sure that, you know, we continue to give back to the society in empowering the young people. So really that's how the initiative started. Lillian said youth lacked in the crucial area of financial literacy, a stumbling block that has seen many businesses collapse. In having the workshops, mentors were assigned mentees to help them understand sound financial management as a necessary tool to the sustenance and growth of any business. One of the key issues that we really tried to address with the initiative was the issue of financial literacy. You know, we have instances where young people now everybody says young people must go into business, but how prepared are young people? Because really as Botswana, we don't have much of a culture of entrepreneurship. So it's a culture that we are still building up. And so we need young people to be guided into understanding what they're getting themselves into. And so issues of mentorship. So we found out that, you know, participants were saying they're very appreciative of the fact that at least they do have people who are business mentors within the program who've been able to take them through certain issues. It could be things such as how do I build strong business partnerships? How do I how do I put together a contract? How do I how do I take my business from you know the inception stage to actually you know growing the business? So issues of uh, mentorship were very crucial issues of financial literacy where we have a young person who just registered a business and uh, within you know six months of registering a business they get lucky and they get a tender and all of a sudden they have access to this huge amount of money and how do they manage that money so that that money is able to really serve its purpose of, of, of expanding the business growing the business and making an impact uh, within the society we hope you enjoyed watching tonight's episode as much as we enjoyed putting it together for your viewing pleasure. Now make sure to visit our social media pages for previous episodes you may have missed. But until next time, good night. This program was brought to you by First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you?